Hello guys, my name is Dika Real. I'm a tattoo artist from UK and I'm also owner of Tattoo Studio 58. Please subscribe, press bell button and you will be notified when I have my new videos coming out. Uh, today I'll be telling you how to set up a coil tattoo machine. This one is bronze micro dial tattoo machine by Mickey Sharps. This is a liner. Now I'll put on some gloves because I prefer to, even though my, my hands are nice and clean, I prefer to wear gloves so I don't contaminate machine and equipment more than needed. Before you put on gloves in the real life when you're about to tattoo, you have to take your watch off and your jewelry because it collects bacteria and if you don't sterilize it properly, don't wash it, it's just not good and may cause cross-contamination. So take this off. So back to the machine. This is actually one of the very first machines that I've got for myself. Uh, one of first, not very first. I actually even got it tattooed on myself. So Mickey Sharps is famous for quality machines. Uh, I'm not here to advertise Mick Sharps as much as I love it. You choose your own coil machine. Now, this coil machine is fantastic liner, very reliable. If you want to get a first coil machine, by all means, this one is very good. You will need a grip, you will need a tube and a tip either metal tip or a plastic tip. This sort of tips are disposable tips, so you can check them out after you use them. And metal tips, stainless steel tips, you can clean and sterilize and reuse. And you also have grips like this that are made of plastic, sometimes it has even rubber kind of grip for better holding and this is how it looks. This is disposable, you can get rid of it after use. And you will also need a needle, a standard looking needle. This is how it looks. Packed, it has expiry date, number of needles, number of the grouping of the needles and size of the needles as well. And you will need an Allen key. Now this is a really simple one, it's a good idea to invest into a good set of Allen keys on one bunch. I'm showing one, I think, here, right now. Uh, as an example, you can buy it on any, in any DIY store on, uh, or Amazon. I'll show you the link to a good one in Amazon. You'll also need a couple rubber bands and a grommet. In the industry, it's also called sometimes a nipple. I don't know, maybe it's the thing in the UK, but yeah, grommet as well. So disposable grips uh, made of, of, from plastic and this part is uh, rubber for better gripping. Now, I prefer not to use plastic grips when I can. Uh, I'm not using coil machines for a while. I'm now using rotary machines for several reasons, but I love coil machines. They're fantastic to learn on and to feel better skin, how it reacts, it has, a, you feel a better give of the, from the skin. So coil machines, me as a mentor, I always suggest to learn on coil machines if you can. If you're gonna be setting up your coil machine using disposable grips, then it may not be very balanced because plastic tube under the pressure and heaviness of the machine eventually will start can start bending. Nowadays they made really well, but still if I place this in my machine because the grip is so light, it really disbalance it. It's I can't even balance it on my finger. It machine will pull it down and when it does say if you're working at the conventions which are usually really long hours 
I used to use them at the conventions because it's easier to dispose it, not to worry about uh, sterilizing and keeping your stainless steel grips in a separate box or some sort of bag which you will take back to the studio and wash it, clean it properly, sterilize it. I used to use disposable grips. It's great for traveling and conventions, but as you can see, it's really, really light and it will drag your wrist downwards and eventually will cause pressure on your hand, on your wrist, and you will feel uncomfortable. The more uncomfortable you feel through tattooing, the more you will get stressed, the more and more tired you will get eventually. Now, this is why I suggest not using disposable grips when you can and use metal grips. Now, you will need a metal grip, tube, and to put the tube in the grip, you will need an Allen key. Now, this perfectly fits in the grip here. I will tighten in the screw, making sure it sits really tight. It's not gonna slide out and cause an incident. And we're gonna use a tip. I'm using metal tip. Some fancy tips nowadays have even says the size, which needle to use in them. I don't even look at the size most of the time because I will judge opening of the tip and see which needle will suit the best. So this is how I would place my tip in, just like so. Sometimes some artists prefer to use plastic tips. I'm not gonna go into this topic. It's gonna take a long time if I'm gonna go into every explanation about each part, each material, each equipment I'm using. Um, it's gonna take a long time. Place your tip so it aligns with the screws. And I'll tell you later why. It's very, very handy. So I place it like that. So I definitely see the part where needle is going to be seen. When you have set up grip, tube and tip all together, now you're ready to put the needle in. This is how it looks sterile packed needle. To open it safely, open it from this end through the paper, because if you'll be opening through the plastic, it will take longer time, it's not comfortable. So open it like so. and you see your needle. Now, before we place the needle inside the grip and the tip, we need to bend it slightly. When we will be applying rubber bands over it, with the pressure, it will, pressure will cause long bar to bend inwards and potentially needle is gonna stick upwards. And we need our needles to sit flush to the back of the tip to make nice precise lines you have to be really in control of machine machine has to be well set up and needle has to sit nice and tight and flush against the tip so the needles have to really run like really tight flush inside the tip there are a few ways to bending needles this is how, how I bend the needle by holding this part here where needles are soldered to the long bar and by the ear. Actually, people call it in different ways. I remember I was taught that this part of the needle is called ear. So I hold it by the ear and bend it like so. So now we have it kind of the center of the needle like so. Sometimes you'll need to bend it more. This is approximately how much it needs to be bent. Now we need to place, place needle inside the grip with the tip. What you do is 
first you will check if there is no debris, nothing potentially sticking out, it's just a good practice to do. You will place it nice and slow and gravity will help it to go to slide down. It's really important that the needles don't crash into uh, walls, into the sides of the tip or the tube, inside the tube and a grip, because at, then they will be not sharp, they will be bent. The needles in the grouping of the needles will be bent, that is not good. You will damage the skin of your client and tattoo will not heal really well. So you help the needle slightly, slip down. One needle inside the grip and a tip should be placed that way, not with the bend facing down, but the bend of the main bar facing upwards. And this short part of the needle, needle grouping is soldered too, has to always lay downwards so this part will be flushed to the tip inside the tip and the long bar has to be on top so checking here whether the long bar is at the top so now we can place grip into tube clamp this is how we do it this should be open and screwed there are some coil machines where a tube clamp is really quite narrow and can be really tight to place the tubing but trust me they're all more or less standard and you should have no struggles to place it inside. Place it like so, screw it for the first time not too tight because if you need to adjust how much needles hanging out, sticking out from the, from the tip. You will need to unscrew this part again and tighten it and then tighten when you're happy. So you'll need to double check whether the long bar of the needle is on top, which you can see through this window, cleaning window in the tip. And only then place grommet inside the ear of the needle. Once the grommet in the ear sitting there, you can then attach it to armature bar, like so, on top hat grommet. This little, this little bar here is called top hat grommet. So you place the grommet on top of that, like so, and you can tell now that the bar of the needle is really close to the upper part of the tube. And this is where rubber bands come handy. By placing them over, sometimes one is enough, sometimes two is the better option. I'm placing two. I'm making sure that they are not twisted, so there is no extra pressure on the, on the bar. And now you can see how much change the space. So the bar is now away, slightly more away from the tube and closer to the center of the tube. And when we, if we release it again, you will see that the bar, the needle, is uh, really, really close to the top part of the tube. Now that we have rubber bands over the needle, we can check how far the needle is going to be hanging out, sticking out. And to do so, now I'm not happy how much is coming out needle from the tip. So what I do now, I um, tighten and screw this part of the tube pump. And by pressing on armature bar, 
I can see the maximum length of needle sticking out. Now say this is the length I'm happy with, I release my thumb from armature bar, hold tight grip with the tip because if you don't it's gonna sli start sliding and you have to do the whole procedure over again. So tighten it again, press on armature bar like so, you'll see that needle is sticking out as much as you want. This is approximately the length I would be using. Because grip, the metal grip, tube and tip are quite heavy, it really helps to balance out the machine. So now machine is not gonna be falling backwards as much as it, it would have been with a disposable grip and tip. So make sure that there is space for at least one finger from the grip, between grip and surface of the skin so then you can hold it more comfortably everything is made of plastic or rubber or paper would go straight to clinical waste bin so in this case if you're using plastic tip or plastic grip bands elastic bands and a grommet this would all go into the bin. If there is anything I missed, please comment below and I try to answer all of your questions in the next video or I will even make a separate video where I'm trying to fix the issues that you may have. Thank you very much for your time, thank you for watching this video and see you next video!